Hey guys, and welcome to another very exciting Blender tutorial. Now, before we get into it, I just want to make a quick comment about a video I did two or three weeks ago about which one is the best 3D application. It was absolutely not my intention to sound like I wasn't giving Blender much credit. It's actually quite the opposite. Blender is the main tool that I use for all of my 3D work. Well, that and a bit of Houdini. I really like using it and with version 2.8 coming up pretty soon, it might be an absolute game changer. My main point was really just that as of right now, Blender just isn't as widespread in the visual effects and filmmaking industry like tools such as Maya, Cinema 4D or 3ds Max and so just take that into consideration when you try to figure out which program to learn. This however is absolutely going to be a Blender tutorial and now you may be wondering what I've actually got in that box. Just a little while ago I actually surprised Walter with a cute new pet. And because that was so much fun the first time around, I'm actually growing myself a second crack and to repeat the experience. Actually, maybe let me just quickly check. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. No, it's still alive. Cool. All good. Well, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can model, rig and animate a tentacle in Blender. This is going to be an intermediate tutorial and I will assume that you are familiar with all of the basics of Blender. If you're not, I actually have a full beginner tutorial series for Blender on my channel. I'm going to link you that down below. So be sure to watch that first before you come back here. But now, while I try to figure out where to hide this little guy, let's jump right into the tutorial. Whoa! Welcome to the exciting world of Blender. I've got a brand new empty project file here. And the very first thing I'm going to do, come up to the top and change my render engine from Blender Render over to Cycles. It's just a more modern engine, it'll render much nicer. And then I'm just going to delete this cube because it isn't very tentacly. In order to model this tentacle, we're going to use a Bezier curve. And just to be very upfront, I didn't invent the method of creating this tentacle. I got it from a channel called InventiMark. I'm going to link that down below, you know, just to say thank you and give credit where credit is due. But now to get started, let's create a Bezier curve. So Shift and A, come into curves and let's drop down a Bezier curve. Let's zoom in a little bit and if you press tab and go to edit mode, the Bezier curve has two points, one on each side that you can move around and being a Bezier curve, it also has these Bezier handles that you can grab and drag around to tweak the curve in any way that you want. And while I do want my tentacle to be nice and bendy, I don't actually want to model it in a bendy way because we're going to add a spine to it later on anyways. I kind of want this curve to be nice and straight. So I'm just going to tweak my curve to kind of align it very, very smoothly with the center axis. I'm just going to drag these endpoints out a little bit more just to make the tentacle a little bit longer. And I think that should be fine. Let's exit edit mode. And in my outline, I also want to rename this curve. Let's just call this one tentacle. And in order to add some volume to this curve in the properties panel over on the right hand side, let's come into the curves menu. And in here, you've got an option to bevel this curve. If you jack this depth up, Blender is going to bevel out this curve, but if you zoom in a little bit, this is only kind of half a bevel. It's like half a pipe wrapped around our curve. In order to make this wrap nicely around the curve, again in the curves menu, under the fill option, let's change this from half over to full. So now we've kind of got this pipe swept along the length of our curve. And because tentacles aren't usually very square, again in the curves options, under the bevel depth, you'll find the resolution. And as you jack this up, Blender is going to add more and more resolution to it. And what I want to do, let's just zoom in a little bit, press Z to go into wireframe. And I do want quite a high resolution mesh because we are going to have to model out those suction cups along the length of the tentacle. By the way, they're called suckers. So in case you don't learn anything else in the rest of this tutorial, at least you'll be able to take that to the next trivia quiz. So along the circumference, I already have quite a bit of detail, but I might jack up the resolution just a little bit more, maybe to around about 30 or so. And right now you can see that we have a lot of resolution around the circumference, but along the length, we only have, you know, just a few number of sections. So we have these really long and stretched out polygons here. In order to add more segments along the length of the tentacle, again, in the curves menu, let's come all the way down. And it's got this resolution here, this U resolution. Let's just jack this up more and more and more. And we can get up to 64 and we've added quite a lot of detail. But if I zoom in on any of these polygons, you can see they're still kind of elongated, they're not square yet. And I do kind of want all of these polygons to be quite square. However, we can't increase the resolution past 64. 
But the cool thing is this resolution isn't actually based on the length of the entire curve. It's based on the number of segments that that curve has. So with the curve selected, press tab to go into edit mode. Press A, A to select all of the points. So we have two points of this Bezier curve, one at the start, one at the end. Let's press W to bring up the specials menu and let's choose to subdivide this curve and keep an eye on what happens to the polygon. So W, subdivide. And we just got a whole bunch more because these 64 segments are between each point. And now my Bezier curve is one, two, three points. Let's zoom in a little bit and check this out. And that actually looks a whole lot better. If these are still a bit elongated, depending on how you stretch your curve, in the subdivide options, you can also just check this up more, but now they're being you know, stretched out the other way. So I think I'm quite happy with just one subdivision right here. Let's press tab to exit edit mode, period on the numpad to zoom all the way back out. So there's kind of our base for our tentacle. And now the next thing I want to do is I want to taper this tentacle because it looks like a pipe, right? It doesn't look terribly organic. So I kind of want to add an organic taper so it's thicker and it goes thinner and kind of stretches out just like a tentacle would. In order to do that on my curve, I can define a taper object, but right now I have no other object in my scene. So in order to taper out this tentacle, let's add another curve. So shift and A and let's drop in another Bezier curve. Let's bring this one over to the side and I'm actually going to rename this to taper curve and then reselect the tentacle. And now let's change this taper object over to the taper curve. And immediately you can see the taper being applied to our curve. And it's kind of a weird shape right now. It's not right yet. So let's reselect our taper curve. And the way the taper is calculated along the length of this curve is by the distance of this curve to its own origin, to this yellow dot here. Let's press period on the numpad to kind of zoom right back into on the center there. So you can see the curve here stretches along the side and wherever it moves away from this yellow point is where it gets thicker. So right at the end it's thickest and then it kind of gets thin again. So that's kind of how the tapering works. So with the taper curve selected, press tab. And now we can obviously modify these points. And if I drag these points around, you can see the taper change on my actual curve. So I kind of wanted to start out fairly wide. I'm actually going to drag this back as well, kind of match it up with the length of the original curve. We will start it out right there. And again, you can just tweak these handles as well. That looks all right at the start, but it gets way too thin at the end. Not at all what I want. So I'm just going to drag and move this out as well. Again, just align it with the length of the tentacle. This makes it a bit easier to taper. Maybe I don't want it to be quite that thin, but I kind of do want it to tighten up quite quickly at the end. Actually, what I might do, I might bring this in. Let's make this fairly tight, but then just bring this handle out. So it kind of, it, you know, it just kind of is quite thick almost towards the end and then kind of very quickly converges towards the end. Press tab to get out of edit mode and Z so you can see our tentacle. And I think that's actually pretty good for the base shape. Next, because this looks more like a rocket than a tentacle, let's add the actual suction cups along the length of this tentacle. Right now, however, if I select my tentacle and press tab to go into edit mode, all I get is the edit for these points because it's still just a curve. So I do want to convert this to a mesh first. Let's go back to object mode, hold down Alt or Option if you're on a Mac and then press C to bring up the Convert to menu and let's select Mesh from Curve. Nothing much seemed to have happened, but now if I go back into edit mode, I actually have a mesh. This is no longer a curve. This has now been converted to polygons. And the very first thing that you may notice is that right now our tentacle is hollow. It's open on both ends and that's probably not what we want. So let's zoom in a little bit on the end. Let's make sure we're in edge selection mode, hold down Alt or Option and then select one of these edges along the end to select that loop and then press F to insert a face. So we're just kind of closing the tentacle on that side. Let's swing over to the other side and let's do the same thing. Hold down Alt Option, click, select that loop, press F to close off that tentacle. And now let's add those little suction cups, the suckers along the length of this tentacle. For that, I'm going to use the circle select tool. And here there are a few things that are really important and you have to be very careful doing this the right way. Otherwise this will not work. First, press five to go into orthographic view and then press seven to go into the top orthographic view because we want to be looking straight down at this tentacle. Otherwise this might just end up a little bit ugly. And if I zoom in a little bit, I feel there isn't really quite enough detail in this mesh just yet. And the ones in the middle are kind of still stretched out because of the way I've set up my curve. So let me press A, A to select everything. 
and over on the left hand side in the tools, I'm actually going to select to subdivide everything one more time just to get a little bit more detail into this mesh. Just going to make it a little bit easier. So let's subdivide. Just added a whole bunch of polygons. And by the way, keep an eye on the polygons over on the top right hand side. So we've got 32,000 vertices right now. You don't want this to go too crazy high. Otherwise, the modeling, the rigging, the animation is going to slow down quite a bit. Let's just zoom out a little bit. Press A to unselect everything. And I'm still in my top orthographic view and this is very important. Also, very important, change over to face selection mode. Then press C to bring up the circle select tool. So again, we're in top orthographic view in face selection mode with the circle tool selected. And another very important thing, let me just right click to cancel out of that. Make sure you have this option enabled to only select visible faces. Otherwise, you're going to select right through your tentacle. So make sure that is ticked. Let's press C again for the circle select tool. I want to make these a little bit smaller. I don't want the circles to be too close. They shouldn't be touching each other and there should be quite a bit of space between them. And you can kind of decide whether you want to lay down two lines or just one lines. But again, I'm just going to give these quite a bit of space and just kind of start painting these little suckers along the length of the tentacle. And you can use the mouse wheel to make the circle smaller as you go along the length of this tentacle. By the way, while you're in Circle Select Tool, you won't actually be able to move your view around. So right click to cancel out and then you can kind of zoom in a little bit. See again for the Circle Select Tool. And if you want to undo any of these, just middle mouse press and hold and then you can kind of erase those points again. So just zoom in a little bit. Just makes it a little bit easier and just keep painting those little suckers along the length. And I reckon I'm going to leave this very last bit empty. Let's just zoom back out and check this out. And I think that should work all right. Let's press 5 to go back into perspective view. And let's just check this out. And all of these circles actually look pretty good, pretty evenly spaced out. Obviously, just do whatever you want, however you want your tentacle to look. And now we need to kind of extrude these areas out to build out these little suction cups. For that, we are going to use an add-on. And it's available and included in Blender for free. So simply come up into File, User Preferences. And then in the add-ons tab, let's search for loop and be sure to enable the mesh loop tools. This is going to add those tools into Blender. Doesn't require a restart or anything. So let's close this down. And now again, make sure you are in face selection mode. Otherwise, this is going to go horribly wrong. Press W to bring up the specials menu. And because we've enabled the add-on, we now have these loop tools up in there. And let's select circle. What this tool does, it essentially cuts circular outlines around those circles that you've got selected. And let's check this out, make sure everything worked all right. Sometimes some of these circles can turn out a little bit weird after you use this add-on. So you may have to erase and repaint one of these circles. And the reason I'm using this author view top down is because it makes sure that all of these circles are nice and you know round. If you're trying to paint these suckers on in perspective view, they might end up being a little bit elongated and then the loop tools just don't work very well. So this actually turned out pretty good, I'd say. And now I want to push these circles out of the tentacle and start building out those little suction cups. For that, you can press G with all of these faces still selected. And uh, it doesn't really do what we want. I kind of want to push them out along the surface normal. So they're kind of poking out equally in all directions. So let's right click to cancel that operation. And now again, a little bit of a tricky thing. So do pay attention. Change the pivot center from median point over to individual origins. Then over on the right hand side, change the transformation orientation from global over to normal. So we're going to move all of these ones out along the surface normal. So, so the circle on the right is going to go a bit to the right. The one on the left is going to go a bit to the left. Let's press G to select the grab and move tool. Press Z to lock this movement down along the Z axis. And now press Z again to change this movement to be along the surface normal. Can you see what's happening? This is kind of really cool. I really like this feature. Let's just push these out just a little bit to kind of build the base of those suction cups. Let's press E to extrude. And again, it's going to go along the surface normals. I'm just going to push them out a very little bit. Press E again. Let's extrude one more time. And now let's press S and let's scale this out a little bit. Press E to extrude and let's pull this up. Press E again to extrude, S for scaling. I'm going to bring this in to kind of start building in the inside, the rounded closing part of the suction cup. Press E again, I'm going to start insetting the suction cup just a little bit, S. I'm just going to scale this in one more time. And E, and let's extrude inwards a little bit. And again, just S, and let's scale this down just a little bit. So really building out these little, these little suction cups here. And again, you can kind of modify them in any way you want. Maybe let's do one more extrude and a scale to bring this in nice and round towards the center. So now we've kind of built out all of these suction cups along the entire length of our tentacle. 
Let's press tab to exit edit mode, period on the numpad to kind of center in on our tentacle. Let's just zoom in a little bit here and let's just check this out. So let's press control, alt and zero on the numpad. It's going to place our camera. Let's just press F12 to render this out. Cool, that's actually not too bad. However, you may know a little bit of deformation, a bit of problems around the base of these little suckers here. And there are a number of different ways to fix this. I'm not going to go into too much detail here. The easiest way that I found to fix this simply with the tentacle selected. In the properties panel come to the modifiers tab and I haven't talked about modifiers yet but I might make a different tutorial on that and in here the one I want to add is simply called subdivision surface so let's just click this one to add that modifier you don't need to know anything about it. just leave it on the default settings if you now press F12 to render this out cool that looks really nice and smooth now next right now our tentacle looks kind of it, it kind of looks a little bit like a, a submarine or, you know, still kind of like a rocket. It looks a bit too even for a tentacle. If I'm thinking of a tentacle arm like an octopus or something or, you know, calamari, it's kind of always a little bit deformed. It's kind of, you've got some bulges and some weird shapes. For that, we're going to do a bit of sculpting. And again, I haven't really talked about sculpting in a separate tutorial, but I'm just going to touch on it anyways, just because it's fun. It's actually really easy to do. Also, I'm, because I've got this camera placed right here in the middle, I'm actually just going to make this invisible because otherwise it's going to be a bit in the way. I'm also going to hide my taper curve and the lamp so we can kind of just concentrate on this tentacle right here. And in order to do sculpting with the tentacle selected, simply change from object mode over into sculpt mode. And on the left hand side in the tools shelf under tools, you now have this brush and you can actually click on this icon here and select a whole bunch of different brushes that you can literally paint onto your model. Let's select the clay strips for now and you get a little brush here. By the way, you can press F and then move the mouse out and in to kind of change the size of it. And it also has a strength and for that you can press Shift and F. It looks a little bit less intuitive, but you can kind of move the mouse in to give it full opacity or you can fade it out to make it nice and soft. I want something fairly softish, but I want it fairly small as well. Let's just come to the side of this tentacle. Let's just click and then just paint a drag on this mesh. Now, this may have been a little bit too subtle, so let me just undo that, Shift and F. Let's just make this a little bit stronger. Let's just paint along the edge of this tentacle here. And you can see how I've kind of added this strip. I've kind of sculpted this. So I'm just going to just draw a few odd shapes along the edges right here. I just kind of want to deform it a little bit. I just don't want it to look too organic. By the way, if you're noticing strokes being applied in two or more places of the mesh at the same time, like it did just here, let's come down in the brush and by default under symmetry or look, usually a mirror option might be enabled. So I'm just going to disable this X mirror. Let's undo that last operation. Also just going to make my brush a little bit bigger. I'm just kind of keep painting just kind of some odd shapes and just move around the tentacle, just kind of add some shapes and some structure into it, just so it doesn't look so organic. And you can also do that gently over the suction cups themselves. Just don't go overboard, otherwise this might actually kind of shift polygons through each other and give you some really weird results. So I just kind of wanted to add a little bit of, you know, just a little bit of form, a little bit of organic feeling to this tentacle. I actually kind of like how this looks. I think this actually turned out quite nice. The last thing I'm going to do Again, let's come up to the brush tool. I'm going to change from the clay strip brush over to the blob tool. What this does, it essentially just kind of blobs things out. So you can kind of just paint little blobs onto like kind of little dots and pins. It just kind of makes it, ooh, that was a bit too quick. I kind of clicked twice, but because we have about 180,000 vertices in this mesh, sculpting reacts a bit slow. So you need to give it a little bit of time so you can kind of figure that out. And I'm just going to move around the tentacle and just add a few, you know, just dots, kind of just a bit of imperfection, make it look a little bit more organic, but feel free to add absolutely anything you want to, you know, tweak this tentacle to your liking. Cool, I think this tentacle looks really nice. Let's consider the modeling part of this tutorial done and let's move on to rigging up this tentacle so we can animate it really easily. Let's return to object mode and right now you can see that the origin of the tentacle isn't actually at the base of this tentacle. But for the purpose of using this tentacle in other projects or whatever you want to use tentacles for, let's move the origin to the actual base of this mesh. So let's press tab to go into edit mode. Let's select the face at the base of this tentacle. Shift and S to bring up the snap menu. Let's select to snap the cursor to select. That's going to place our 3D cursor right in the center of that face. Let's return to object mode. In the tool shelf on the left hand side, under set origin, let's select to move the origin to the position of the 3D cursor. That's going to move the origin of this object to the center of that face. Shift and S one more time. Let's move the cursor to the center. 
And with the tentacle still selected, Shift and S one more time. And let's move the selection to the cursor. So it's going to move our selected object, the tentacle, to where the cursor is, which is the center of our scene. Press period on the numpad to zero in on that. And now we've got the tentacle positioned properly. Let's press R to kind of move this tentacle around. And let's press Y to lock the rotation of the tentacle to the Y axis and hold down Control or Command on the Mac and you can kind of snap this tentacle. I want to snap it right upright. And under Rotate, you can see uh, minus 85. Nope, we want minus 90 to have this tentacle standing up straight in our scene. And now let's add a skeleton, a rig for this tentacle so we can animate it really easily. With the cursor still in the center of our scene, which is now the base of our tentacle, or if it's not there, press Shift and F and move the cursor to the center. Let's press Shift and A, and let's drop in an armature, an actual skeleton. And I'm going to drop in a single bone that's going to be placed right where this tentacle sits, so that's why I can't actually see it. But over on the right-hand side in my outline, I can see the armature. With that selected, come into the armature options. Just go up a little bit. Let's enable the X-ray options so we can see the armature over any meshes we may have in the scene. With the armature selected, press Tab to go into Edit Mode. And we now need to extrude this bone a number of times along the length of the tentacle to kind of give it a spine, like a snake, that we can then animate. In order to make aligning the bone with the mesh nice and easy, let's press Ctrl, Alt and Q or Command, Option and Q on a Mac to go into Quad View. So you can kind of get nice orthographic views from all sides. You can make sure that the bones and the skeleton is nicely aligned with your mesh. So let's make sure we can see everything nicely. And then with the tip of this bone selected, press E to extrude another bone. I want to place this along the length of the tentacle. Press E again, extrude another bone. Come down, press E again. Let's extrude one more bone all the way up to the tip of this tentacle. And in my right ortho, I can see this isn't quite aligned. If you feel like you can't move things around the way you expect them to, in our edit mode, just because we messed around with it, let's change the pivot mode back to median point and let's change the transformation orientation back to global. Otherwise, moving things around in general is not gonna work terribly well. Cool, now we can move things around again the way we expect them to. Let's make sure we're placing all of these bones right in the center of our tentacle. Let's make sure this is you know, looking proper from all sides. Let's exit the split view with Control, Alt and Q or Command, Option and Q on a Mac. Actually, I think I might move the end point for the last bone up just a little bit so it's exactly in the tip of that tentacle. And that looks all right. Let's go into pose mode. If you select one of the bones, press R and rotate it around. Absolutely nothing will happen because we haven't yet skinned the mesh to the armature. So moving the armature doesn't yet move the mesh. With the bone still selected, press Alt or Option and R to reset that orientation. And now we just need to skin this tentacle to the actual armature. Fortunately, that is super easy. And I've already shown you how to do that in my rigging for beginner tutorial. Come into the outliner. Let's grab this tentacle mesh here. And let's simply drag and drop that right onto our armature. Let's let go. And obviously we now have a few options to set parent to and we want to choose with automatic weights. So how the bones influence the mesh is going to be automatically determined by Blender and by default that should actually work pretty well. Let's hit that. That is going to take a couple of seconds. Let's reselect our armature. Make sure you're still in post mode. And again, select one of the bones, press R and then rotate that bone. And now this bone is actually deforming the tentacle. I'm noticing that this is pretty slow though. And one of the reasons for that is also because we still have the subdivision modifier on the tentacle itself. So I might actually open up this armature in my outliner, reselect this tentacle mesh here, come into the modifiers tab. And what I'm going to do is for this subdivision modifier, we want to temporarily disable it because I'm not rendering this tentacle just yet. And I really only need this for the final render. So I'm just going to click on this little eye icon here to disable the subdivision surface modifier on the tentacle. Let's reselect that bone, press R. Nice, it's immediately working a whole lot quicker and you can now position these bones to, well, move your tentacle. However, this setup is not ideal because right now the way the skeleton is set up is that every bone will simply affect all the bones further down that chain. What we've got set up right now is called forward kinematics where a bone affects the bones forward, further down that chain. While that might work fantastically well for certain setups, in this particular case where we just want to move this whole tentacle really nice and easy and just kind of have it, you know, sway about and try to grope for things, 
Forward kinematics is not the way to go. Let's press A, A to select all of our bones, Alt or Option and R to reset all of them. And I now want to set up inverse kinematics. What I'm going to do is I'm essentially going to have this bone here at the end of the tentacle drive the position of all the bones further up the chain. So the kinematics, rather than flowing from the root bone forward, it's going to be driven by an end bone, like a target for the tentacle to reach. And Blender is automatically going to figure out how all of the other bones need to be positioned in order to reach that goal. For that, select the last bone in the chain. In the Properties panel, over on the right hand side, right next to the Bone tab, you'll find a Bone Constraints tab. And in here, you can add a whole number of different constraints to your bones. The one I want to add is called Inverse Kinematics. So let's add this constraint to the bone that made the bone orange, but it hasn't actually done anything yet. And you can see this is kind of indicated as red here, because this bone now needs a target, a place to kind of aim for. And there's a property called target, but right now that's not set to anything. And you can obviously aim it at anything you want, but what I want to do, I want to create a new empty object and kind of place it at the end of the tentacle here. And then we can move this empty object around and then the tentacle is essentially automatically going to try to reach for it. So let's come into object mode, shift and A, and let's simply drop an empty object into our scene. And you can use any shape that you want, it doesn't actually matter. I'm just going to use a plain axis empties object. In my outliner, I'm going to rename this to tentacle target. And then I'm just going to drag it up and place it at the top of my tentacle. Let's reselect the armature, come back into pose mode, make sure we have that bone selected that we've added this inverse kinematics constraint on. And now for the target of this inverse kinematics constraint, I want to select my tentacle target. You may have seen that the tentacle immediately snapped in position to kind of shoot straight at that empty object. And the cool thing is that now I can select this empties object, press G to grab, and I can now move this empties object about and the tentacle will automatically try to reach for it. And this is a really great way to now animate this tentacle just by moving this empties object around. However, before we start moving this empties object around, one thing I want to address is that right now this tentacle has very clearly defined straight segments because the bones are quite large and it doesn't, doesn't bend very organically, right? It looks like there's very hard bones in this tentacle. Fortunately, there is a really easy way in Blender to make your bones bendy. Let's reselect the armature. And with the bone with the inverse kinematics constraint selected, you can see this little dotted yellow line that just indicates that this bone actually controls the chain starting at this particular bone. So this entire bone chain is controlled by this one here at the top. So if you move this bone around, you can see how that drives backwards the entire chain of your skeleton. And it's a really great way to set these things up. But what I actually want to do, over in the properties panel, let's come into the armature tab and under display, you can actually display your bones in different ways. Right now they're being displayed as octahedrals. You can also display them as sticks or as B bones or envelopes or as wires. Change this over to B bone, which is kind of just like a little rectangular display for your bones. But now with the last bone selected, come into the bone tab and under this bendy bones section, you'll find an option for segments. Right now that is set to one. Let's just check this up to two, three, four, five, however many you want. And you can see that this bone is now being subdivided and it can start to bend. So you're now adding some elasticity, some flexibility into that bone. Let's select the next one. And again, let's just pump these segments up, maybe two, three. And you can immediately see how the tentacle starts to bend a whole lot more organically just by us adding some more segments. Let's just add three segments to that as well. You can see how the bend becomes much more curved, much more natural. And feel free to pump this up to however many segments you think you need. Obviously, more segments will take a little bit more computing power. And now if we select this empties object, press G, move this around, you can see the whole armature is much more flexible because we've added all of these little segments in there and if you now reselect the armature come into the armature tab and let's disable x-ray mode because we no longer need to see the actual skeleton i'd much rather to see the tentacle wriggle around let's just zoom out a little bit actually i might hide the armature altogether so in my outliner i'm going to disable the visibility on the armature so i really just see the tentacle and if we now move this empty subject around you've got a really nice organic and wriggly tentacle now you can add some keyframes to this empties object to kind of move it around and have this tentacle wriggle really nice and organically. But we can also do that much more easily by using something called F-curve modifiers. These modifiers will allow us to just add some noise, some position noise to this empties object. Let's kind of have it move around a little bit like the tentacle is swaying in the, well, water. 
For that, we're going to be using the graph editor that I've already introduced you to in my animations beginner tutorial. So let's come up to the top right hand corner of the 3D view, click on these three diagonal lines, drag down to split this view horizontally. Let's change the top one over to the graph editor. Right now, there are no curves in here. There's nothing animated yet. We haven't actually enabled any channels or set any keyframes. So with the empties object selected in my 3D view, come down to the timeline, change the keying set over to location. And let's just set a single keyframe. This has now enabled the channel for the location on the tentacle target. And if you expand this, so you've got X, Y and Z location. Right now, there's no animation at all. And as I said, you could just add manual keyframes if you wanted to. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my X location, hover the mouse over the graph editor, press N to bring up the properties tab. And in here you have different tabs for F curve, modifiers and your view. I'm going to go to the modifiers tab. I'm going to add a modifier to this F curve, to this animation curve. So under the add modifier, we're going to drop this down and add a noise. And you can see how this added little noise to this actual curve. And if you now scrub through, you can see this empties object jitter. It's kind of like your octopus had a little bit too much sugar and this is really just very twitchy. It's not really what I'm after. But in the modifier properties, I can actually jack up the scale to kind of make this movement a little bit more smooth. And I can also lower or increase the amplitude depending on how much I want this to move. Let's just check this out. And that is a very, very active tentacle. Let's just come back to the beginning. Alt and A to play this back. Cool. I actually think that looks all right. Now you can repeat the process for the Y and Z location, but you can also just copy and paste these F curve modifiers. For that, on the right hand side next to this add modifier drop down, you've got two buttons for copy to clipboard and paste from clipboard. So I'm just going to copy this to my clipboard, select the Y location curve. I'm just going to paste this from my clipboard in right here. So now I'm also affecting the Y and it, the tentacle is starting to swing around a little bit strong, but also because I've pasted this modifier, the X and Y curves are exactly the same. So on my Y location curve, what I want to do is in the modifiers over on the right hand side, I can change the random seat. So let's just shift this a little bit. And it's going to shift this curve off just so that they don't move exactly the same way. I might also lower the amplitude on this a little bit just so that the tentacle doesn't swing around too crazy. Let's just rewind. Alt and A to play this back. That looks fine to me. Let's select the Z location property in the graph editor. And again, let's just paste from our clipboard. I'm just going to shift this off as well, just so that you know they all kind of don't quite match. And my tentacle is getting a little bit too stretched there. So what I might do is I might come to the very beginning to where I actually set a keyframe on this empty object. Let's push this down a little bit so the tentacle starts out a little bit bent. And let's reset that keyframe so it just pushes everything down. Let's just play this back. It, it's moving way too strong, right? So on my Z location in the modifier, I'm really going to lower this amplitude down to maybe around one. Again, feel free to tweak this in any way that you want. After all, this is your own personal tentacle. And you can do with it whatever you want. So let's rewind and press Alt and A to play this back. And with that, we're done. You have learned how to fully model a tentacle in Blender, how to add a rig to it and use inverse kinematics to drive that tentacle with a single target. And on top of that, you have learned how to use F-curve modifiers to add some organic noise animation to your objects without using any keyframes. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more of this, click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me in what I do on this channel, be sure to check the links down in the video description. And as always, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.